first case to come before us is the State of Ohio versus Wright, and uh, the State of Ohio has waived argument, so we'll just be hearing from the appellant. You have 15 minutes. Thank you, Your Honor. You may please the court. My name is Attorney Jacob Will, and I am representing the appellant, Marco Wright, in this matter. Uh, as I'm sure certain you've read my brief already, I just want to highlight two of the arguments that I raised in there. Um, the first issue that I would like to bring to your attention is uh, <clears throat> whether the trial court erred in denying uh, appellant's motion for uh, an acquittal pursuant to Rule 29, specifically with respect to the aggravated robbery charge against the victim, McKinley Lancaster. Uh, as, as is elicited in the brief, this is a situation where a home invasion occurred by four co-defendants, and amongst them was Mr. Wright. Uh, the individuals went into the house looking for basically marijuana and money. Uh, they were under the impression that the kids living in the house sold drugs. They found some drugs. There was some testimony at trial that the kids there did in fact sell drugs. Specifically, though, as it pertains to McKinley Lancaster, he lived on the third floor of the residence in question. And during the event, the robbery, he was seated on the steps going down to the second floor from the third floor. He testified, and all the testimony really points to the fact that he was sitting there, and he was told to remain on the steps under an implicit threat of some physical harm to him. But that's all there is. There's never an attempt by any of these co-defendants or the appellant himself to actually steal something from Mr. Lancaster. No one asks him for any of his possessions. No one takes his wallet. No one asks him if he has any marijuana. There's some additional testimony from his girlfriend at the time, Devin Lawrence, who was also a victim in this case, that she was stuck in the room while this event transpired. However, uh, her testimony does not indicate that anyone ever came into the room looking for an item to steal. Uh, there's some dispute I have with the state's brief in that they claim they were rummaging through McKinley Lancaster's room, apparently with the intent to steal. That did not come out in any of the testimony that I reviewed. Uh, Devin Morris does not state that they were in there trying to steal something from the room or looking through it, finding items to take. Uh, Ms. Mr. Lancaster himself, who admitted on cross that he had been convicted of a theft offense previously, said, yeah, no one's ever committed a theft offense against me when this happened. He was basically in the house when it occurred. He was obviously a victim of a kidnapping offense, and I'm not here to argue that, but I am arguing that he was not the victim of an aggravated robbery. Uh, and that's important, obviously, because he was, Mr. Wright was convicted of multiple aggravated robberies, and those sentences were all imposed consecutively to, consecutively to one another. Uh, with that in mind, I would contend that the trial court erred when they failed to grant the Rule 29 motion for acquittal with respect to the aggravated robbery charge, as to McKinley Lancaster. Uh, <clears throat> the second issue that I wanted to raise today, Your Honors, was the issue of the firearm specifications that were imposed by the trial court. Uh, at, at sentencing and after trial, Mr. Wright was sentenced to four firearm specifications, and those specifications were all run consecutively to one another for a total of 12 years. Statutorily, the uh, state of Ohio provides that uh, those firearm specifications should merge if they are the part of a single criminal adventure, uh, whether the defendant had a common purpose in committing multiple crimes and engaged in that single criminal adventure. I draw support from State v. Stevens. I know it's not from this district, but it does. Uh, it was good law at the time that I prepared the brief. I believe it's still good law today. Uh, and in that case, uh, it's almost identical to what we have here. We had a man who goes into a house, commits basically an armed inv home invasion or armed robbery, and uh, there were three people in that house. And in that house, he, you know, eventually was convicted of the aggravated robbery. The second district held that those firearm specifications should merge because it was one single criminal transaction. With how many victims? Uh, in Stevens, there were three people in the house. And so in our it doesn't case, matter that there are separate vi victims. That's correct. You, you, you suggest they should all merge, notwithstanding there were separate victims. Correct, Your Honor. And, and the reason that I would suggest that is because there is a different test here. We're not arguing that they should merge under a Johnson Allied Offenses okay. analysis. It's not an animus test. It's a what was the purpose of this criminal adventure. Uh, in this case, in Mr. Wright's case, the purpose was to enter the house, find drugs and money. That was it. The fact that there were five people in there, the fact that there were ten people in there, the fact that there was one person in there wouldn't change the overall criminal objective. It wouldn't change that criminal adventure that the case laws suggested. The number of victims, though, um, is relevant to the risk to, you know, if you have a gun with one victim, it's a risk to one victim. If you have a gun to multiple victims, there's multiple risks. And I absolutely agree with that, Your Honor. And I think, again, the distinction that I'd like to draw here is that I'm not suggesting that the actual criminal offenses should be emerging. No, and they, I understand and they, that. And they don't. And they, 
and I'm not here to argue that because that's not correct. But if the purpose of, of a gun specification is one of the things that's obviously you, you want to deter people committing crimes and using firearms. Yes, and I would agree though, and, and that's why I think one firearm would be appropriate in this case because of the circumstances that it was one house that was entered into. We can distinguish this from a case where uh, a defendant goes into one house, commits a, a string of aggravated burglaries against, or aggravated robberies against maybe three people, and then goes next door and does the same thing. In that case, you now have two separate criminal adventures. You have the one going into house A, and then you have another one going into house B. And that's not what we have here. Again, this is all within one structure, within one residence. The, the difference, as I, I'm asking you, in one residence, they're all in one residence, but this was a number of different individuals living within one building. So they weren't all in one residence. There were a number of different residences. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I would suggest that this is more akin to a bunch of roommates uh, in a college house. I mean, that's the way that the testimony sort of painted the picture. They weren't separate structures inside. They all shared rent. They all shared utilities. There was testimony that one of the individuals who was not home actually was the guy who got all the money from his roommates and then paid the electric bill, for example. The other thing you said that, that Mr. Lancaster was not a victim of an aggravated robbery. Yes. Isn't he the one that said, please don't shoot? He's, as he walked down the steps, because he heard the rustling in the house or the, com the commotion, there's some bangs on the door. He walks down and that's when uh, he testifies, yes, uh, one of them came to me and said, you know, or just showed up there and showed a gun at him and he said, please don't shoot. Right, that, that was him. That was okay. him. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, and, but, and just to go back to that point briefly, um, he may have been threatened. And, and I'm not going to suggest he wasn't, you know, maybe he was, there was an aggravated menacing that occurred there. Uh, but he was, there was, he was never the victim of a theft offense. There was never a theft offense perpetrated on him, nor was one attempted on him. E even when that person had a gun to him, he didn't say, give me your wallet or open up your pockets or what do you have on you. That never actually occurred. He was literally just walking down the steps and decided, you know, let's go get a gun and sit down. And that was just really the end of his involvement. Um, and furthermore, the one defendant who did go into the room, Mr. Lancaster's room on the third floor, he testified and he never stated that he tried to look for anything to take. He was simply trying to escape the police. And that's when he was captured actually coming out of the third floor window. Um, other than that, Your Honors, I would just reiterate, I think that the uh, firearm specifications should merge. Uh, if they, even if they were properly convicted, uh, they should merge for one firearm specification of three years to the act of sentence. Uh, and with that, if there are no other questions, I would rest on the remainder of my brief. Apparently not. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will make um, sure that you get a copy of the written opinion sent out and that um, you can look on the Supreme Court website. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.